August from Princeton University. This is Abhishek Bhattacharjee, correct? Yep. There you go, from professor at Yale University. So it's my pleasure to, to be doing this sort of casual interview so we get to know a few more folks in the computer architectural community. So um, we're gonna talk with Professor Bhattacharjee about a few questions related to how he recruits students and how he does his job as a professor. Thank you so much for helping us out. Um, could you just do a quick introduction a bit about yourself and a bit of overview about your research and your, um, you know, just a bit about yourself, please? Sure. Um, first of all, thanks for hosting this. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really nice service to the community. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, I'm a faculty member at Yale. I've been there since 2019. I was at Rutgers for eight years before mm -hmm. that. Um, my research interests are in computer architecture, but I, it's it's sort of a more at the interface of hardware and software. Um, yeah. So. Most of the work I've done has focused on memory management in the mm -hmm. past, but I also have in the last six, seven years branched off into um, applying computer architecture to neuroengineering, mm -hmm. looking at areas like brain computer interfaces, so sort of mishmash of biology, systems design, and, and such. Awesome. All right, so we do have a few questions here but about how you go over the application process, especially for students interested in applying for PhDs. So the first question we have is, how do you recruit your students and how do you, either when they're applying and also when they show up at Yale? Yeah, um, it's, there isn't really one algorithm that I use to find all the students who'd be interested in working with me. I mean, in general, I think what it boils down to is having a conversation with students that I think would, uh, would be on the same wavelength as me, both research-wise and temperament-wise. So I, I mean, a lot of my recruitment efforts, you know, involve looking at initial applications, identifying whether there are students who'd be interested in the classical mm -hmm. computer systems work I do, or potentially even the more sort of biologically related stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, with a lot of the work in the bio sort of area in particular, I don't expect students to have taken classes yeah. on all mm -hmm. of the background they need. So a lot of it boils down to just talking to the students, seeing what their, mm -hmm. what their temperature for you know, trying out speculative research directions is, and you can yeah. really pick up a lot just mm -hmm. by conversing with students uh, on that. So, yeah, so it's a lot about basically speaking mm -hmm. to students and spending time with them pre, you know, uh, pre, ex pre them accepting any sort of admissions offer that I make. Awesome. And the next question, which is more targeted for current P or for current PhD students, is what do you think makes a successful PhD? I think it's it's a very that that question really depends on how one defines success and there's so many definitions for that i mean i think at the end of the day some some touchstones are did the student you know um at the end of you know the phd is such a grind it's a long journey yeah mm -hmm. at the end of it i think you want to know that you did something that you felt was a good investment for the last five six years or however long you spent so I think what defines success is how does a student feel at the end of that? Do they feel like their time was actually worth it? Yeah. <laughs> more than the paper counts, more than anything else. That, I think, to me is the... Yeah, so of course it's a journey and you really have to make the most of the time that you spend there. But also to make sure you keep enjoying your PhD, right? Yeah, and also understand that like there will be discomfort because that's just how learning goes. But if at the end of it you feel that you got something out of it, it was probably worth it. Awesome. So within the computer architecture area, we are really we work very closely with the industry. So one common question that a lot of more senior students are thinking of is, should we choose industry or academia? So yeah, working in academia, what's a, what are some of the reasons why you chose to do academia? Yeah, um, well, I mean, I think this is a question that you can ask yourself every few years, actually, even yeah. as a professor, because your motivations may change. So I, initially, I picked academia because I thought that it would give me academic freedom in terms of you know, choices of what problems to explore. Mm -hmm. And I really like to teach. Awesome. And that's, that's a very vital part, at least for me, of mm -hmm. my research agenda, because mm -hmm. most of the research ideas I try fail uh, abysmally. Uh -huh. So when they fail, if at least I go teach and get something out of that, it, mm -hmm. it helps tide over the research that's true. failings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was where how, how I began. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, once I got tenure, I think my motivation shifted. I think now it's shifted into a little bit into what work can I do? What work do I want to pursue that I think academia would be more hospitable I for? See. So a lot of the neuroengineering work yeah. I'm interested in, for example, academia really is the right place to do it because mm -hmm. that isn't in the immediate uh, needs of yeah. industry. Awesome. Um, so that's what keeps me in academia now. I, think. I see. 
Yeah, and I think that relates to our follow-up question is, how do you pick new research areas and new projects? So for example, you're a domain expert in memory management, but now you've picked up this new area with computer architecture and brain-computer interfaces, and maybe you could talk a bit about like how are you inspired to make that change and pick up this new project? Yeah, I think I look at three things. I think the first thing I do is try to visualize what talk I would be excited to give five years from now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because if I can get excited about giving a research talk to my community five years from now and I think through what content should be in there and what kind of research taste I want people to associate with my, my lab, yeah. it allows me to kind of reverse engineer what papers I should be looking at now. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's really one thing. One of the big things. The other big thing is, you know, the research process is a marathon, not a sprint. You need to know what you can pursue tied over the, the you know the paper rejections and so on so I, it has to be something that I feel personally invested in for the long haul cool. um, and I think things I'm excited to teach students about mm -hmm. is cool. the last bit. and then a few more questions a bit about looking forward is or reflecting is what is your favorite part about being a professor I think it's impact on people it's really the teaching the an idea of like advancing science but it's not just the advancing science, it's mm -hmm. giving students the tools to advance science beyond you, mm -hmm. really, because that, that's, I think, the bigger form of impact. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that, that's really mm -hmm. the biggest thing. Yeah, and similarly, this is uh, great for outreaching and letting other people know more about yourself about the computer architecture community, but also to able to give, um, give good resources to students in the future who want to apply to grad school or are currently in the grad school right now. And a final fun question, but it's also very important, is how do you deal with work-life balance and what are some of the hobbies that you have to, to have the fun part of your life, you know? Yeah, that's, I think, again, because it's a marathon and not a sprint, you need to make sure that you have a life outside of work. For me, mm -hmm. I mean, I um, I play a lot of sports. I've always played sports from a young age, so I you know keep up with that. Music is another mm -hmm. big thing for me. I, I think, you know, for me, it's got to be areas that have nothing to do with my research, like yeah. a real <laughs> diversion from it. So, mm -hmm. you know, my modes of expression, I, I guess, would be, you know, music related things, playing sports, spending time with friends outside of outside of work and reading, reading about things that have nothing to do with computer architecture because I read enough about computer <laughs> architecture. So um, yeah, yeah, you know, general, but, but being disciplined about that, really sort of committing, I think, to those things. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, thank you so much. That concludes our interview with Professor uh, Abhishek Bhattacharjee. Thanks. Thanks so much.